Greetings to everyone in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shabbat Shalom. Today is a wonderful day and I have a special message for everyone and I hope you all get blessed. So let us begin in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you Lord for your grace and your mercy towards all of us Lord. I want to commit this message to you Lord Father. I pray Lord that you will guide my lips and let the words that come out from my mouth Lord be according to your perfect will and bless everyone who is watching and hearing this message today in Jesus mighty name. Good morning everyone. <laughs> Before I start with the message, I want to share a course of action we have undertaken with regards to the church venue. The Lord brought me to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and when I read some verses here, let's begin with verse 11. He says, I returned and saw under that the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance has happened to them all. For what for man does not know his time like fish taken in a cruel net, like bird caught in a snare. So the sons of men are snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. And verse 16, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. Words of the wise spoken quietly should be heard rather than the shout of a ruler of fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. So we have come to a season where we are part of this time and chance. And the Lord has asked me not to renew the lease of the church venue. So by this November, we will not officially have a venue anymore, but we have a venue in heaven <laughs> and God is good because whatever the enemy takes away, God will release something much, much better. So I believe in our hearts, it's not what we see, but what was in the plan of God. So this time, as we close this, this venue, <clears throat> I, I rejoice because there's something better. And I want you to rejoice as well because God is going to supply something much, much better for all of us. So I know some of you may be sad about it, but put a smile on your face and know that God's plan is in your life as well. Okay, thank you very much. So let us begin with the message. The message for today is people will only believe what they want to believe. So let's uh, begin with the scripture. But before that, there is a, a great deception for those who claim to be free thinkers. Jesus said, believe in me and you will have life. So in the book of John chapter 11, verse 25, he says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me, shall never die. Do you, do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. John 14, verse 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I, wouldn't, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. So Jesus was not asking them to believe in something of this world, but of something beyond this world. There is a misconception of believing something of the supernatural as earthly. 
But having said that, it is true that the only way to see the supernatural is to let part of our life to believe in the faith that Jesus Christ came to teach. Does the unbelieving world deserve the sacrifice of Jesus dying on the cross? No, of course not. It was a precious gift from God that we do not deserve. In response to the question asked by Pilate, this is what he said to Pilate in John chapter 18, verse 36. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my precious servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Verse 37, Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Verse 38, Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. This is one of the many reasons why people believe in everything ungodly rather than what is written in the Bible. It is easy, it is logical, not confronting, not intimidating. The written word in the Bible requires obedience, commitment, and action applied and accountability. According to our Father God, He gave His only begotten Son for the salvation of this world. But many people of this world only think about what happens today and the future living in this world and not of the kingdom of God in the spirit world and the next life of eternity. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, we all live and die, but the kingdom of God goes beyond death. You have a spirit that will live for eternity, whether it is with God or whether it is not with God. So the Lord is giving us a chance to enter into His kingdom. There Jesus is the King, although one day the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is coming back. So there is a need for us to believe in Him now and accept Him because things will change. Believe it or not, it will change. Let's turn to the Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. We are talking about life for eternity here, guys. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Many when they hear or read the Bible, or the words in the Bible, they don't like it because it restricts them from doing anything they like, whether it is good or bad. Let's now turn to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1. We will read verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. However, for this reason I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long-suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on Him for everlasting life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. When you love something, don't you protect it? Yes, you do. You do that to your material things and also to our household people. You protect it. In John chapter 8, verse 32, it says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
When Jesus said these words, he knew that many people were bound or their minds held captive by the enemy. Many of the words what Jesus said had a purpose to bring us into the kingdom of God, to set us free from the shackles of the enemy. Many people believe that when you die, you just cease to exist. Nothing happens, puff, finish. Their main purpose is to just live their lives in this world as best as they can and enjoy. But I tell you something, my dear brothers and sisters, there's something much, much better, and it is eternal, everlasting. We need to enter that kingdom. That's why Jesus gave us a son. Jesus came here to die on the cross. The Father gave us his son so that we can enter into his kingdom. Only by believing in God's word can we put meaning in our existence. Purpose-driven life according to God's word that is eternal. Paul said when he knew that his life on earth was almost over in the book of 7, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 6 says, For I am ready being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand i have fought the good fight i have finished the race i have kept the faith guys we need to keep that faith finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge will give to me on that day and not to me only but also to all who have loved his appearing. That includes you and me, my dear brothers and sisters. Now, concerning all the achievements we have accumulated in this world, whether you're a brain surgeon, whether you're a structural engineer, whether you're a politician, a singer, an actor, a lawyer, an accountant, what will happen to it all? If someone dies not knowing God, not knowing God's ways, all this knowledge fades away in the minds of people they know and love, even for those who respected and appreciated them. If someone dies knowing God's ways, all their knowledge, skills are preserved in the book of life recorded in heaven. That is the big difference. Right? So, Consider this, when you die, what's going to happen to your life? If you don't have God, it will fade away and people will forget you. But if you have God, it is recorded in heaven, in the book of life. So God takes into account all the sacrifices you have done for Him, all the good things you have done for Him, and it is recorded. Also, He takes into account when you make a mistake and ask God for forgiveness, whether it's to God or to somebody close to you, when you ask for forgiveness, there is a restoration going through in heaven regarding your spirit. See, your spirit will live forever. It's not going to die. The only thing that dies is your body. So in the book of Isaiah, Chapter 24, let's read from verse 4. The earth moans and fades away. The world languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth languish. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant, Therefore the curse has devoured the earth, and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burnt, and few men are left. Let's look at the Revelation chapter 3 verse 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. That overcoming means that you have entered into the life of Christ. 
Because the life of Christ is not easy to follow. Right? But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. See, it is the Holy Spirit that is speaking to us. That's why it is important that all of you receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will teach you all things of God and will direct your path. Even when you're about to, com to commit a mistake, the Holy Spirit will warn you and tell you not to do it. So it is important, it is a key to enter the kingdom of God, is to be born again. What is to be born again? To be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that we can live our life according to heaven. You see, the kingdom of God is not of this world. Right? It is in another dimension. The key word in the book of Proverbs is wisdom. The ability to live life skillfully. A godly life is an ungodly world. A godly life in an ungodly world. However, it is not a simple assignment. Proverbs provides God's detailed instructions for His people to deal successfully with the practical affairs of everyday life. How to relate to God. How to relate to parents, to children, to neighbors, and our government. We need a combination of common sense and divine perspective necessary to handle life's issues. In the Bible, God teaches us to teach our children in the ways of God so that our children will not go astray. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, uh, chapter 6, verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way. While you lie down, when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be a fortlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. You see, my children, my dear brothers and sisters, God teaches us His Word. And in turn, we got to teach it to our family. It is our responsibility that our children grow up knowing the ways of God. We cannot just leave them to learn you know, education without God in the life. There needs to be a balance. Because why live and learn and get a degree and end up dead not knowing God? It's dead. So when we know God, it's alive, guys. It's alive. We are so caught up in this society just to educate our children to survive and to be successful without God in their lives. The consequence of that is not good. Left without God's principles, our children, when they grow up, will only believe what they want to believe. And that is not what God wants us to do. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18, Therefore, you shall lay up words of mine in your hearts and in your soul, and bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be a fortress between your eyes. Oh, okay, I read this already before. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. For all the parents watching and hearing this message, start educating your children with the Word of God. This is your responsibility. 
It is not up to the priests, to the pastors, or ministers of God's word to teach your children. At least homeschool your children with God's words. Sit down at the table together as a family and share the word of the Lord. Not only to your children, you can also do that with between husband and wives. Sit down at the table and share the word, what God has spoken to you. And I tell you what, it's going to change your lifestyle. There are three ways we hear messages in our thoughts. One is our own conscious speaking to us. The second one are the whispers of Satan. The third one is the voice of our Lord. Which one are you listening right now? The other aspect about this message is that as a Christians, we come to enjoy hearing the voice of our Lord. One thing we must remember, we need God's discernment to know what God is talking about. It is the Holy Spirit that will teach us all things pertaining to God. When God talks, it is from the spirit dimension, from the fourth dimension. When we hear God, it's from the earthly dimension, the third dimension. So that is why when God speaks to you, you need to ask the Holy Spirit, what does that mean? We could hear God speaking to us, but we don't know what it actually means. The explanation comes when you wait upon the Holy Spirit to explain to you. We cannot hear from God and use our earthly dimension to assess what God is saying. This way, we will make errors. But when we ask the Holy Spirit, you will not make any error. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, he says, These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches us, but, with the Holy, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing, comparing, spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritually judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? but we have the mind of Christ. It is very important that before we speak in the name of God, we should spend time to ask the Holy Spirit for clarification and understanding. In these last days, before the tribulation days come, that we all seek and know the Holy Spirit. Have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit since you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? If the answer is yes, then seek the deeper things of God. If the answer is no, then be still and humbly seek for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You will know when the Holy Spirit comes inside you. When we only believe what we want to believe, we err in both areas, the natural first, then the spiritual realm. We are not all born to know about the spirit realm. And that is why Jesus had to come to bring us salvation, to be able to return to the Father God when the time is ordained. God has ordained the timing of our life. When we are born and when we die, which no man can decide, it's beyond our control, but we can certainly control how we are going to live our lives here on earth. If you are truly a wise person, you will examine what you have believed in the past and what you are believing today and what you are going to believe in the future. Men leading other men without God may end up unfruitful. Men leading other men with God will bear much fruit and blessings. 
I have a short definition of a blessing. We are faltering on the thresholds of understanding. Only the courageous discover God's riches. Faint heart will, co will content himself or herself with what their eyes behold. The spirit in you is wiser and will gladly feel all material blessings to lay hold on the eternal life. The spirit is not enticed by the glitter of gold, nor tempted to desert heavenly vision in favor of temporal blessings. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, we all want blessings, right? Because being blessed, it's easy. Things turn out your way. But there are times where where you will find yourself in situations where the blessing is not there. And if you seek God, God will release the blessing for you. If you don't seek Him and seek man, well, it may not be fruitful for you. And that is why there are many people today who have no more hope. They just want to commit suicide because the blessing is gone. There is no more hope. Consider what's happening now with regards to this lockdown. What restrictions are you going through? You're bound in your house. You cannot go here. You cannot go there. You can only go to buy the necessities that you need. And for how long? How long is it going to be? God is giving us many opportunities now to spend and seek and hear to ask the Lord to enter into our lives so that we don't just believe what we want to believe, but we begin to believe what God is telling us, what is written in the Bible. My dear brothers and sisters, I bring you this message today for you to change your lifestyle. I know some of you, you know, have depended so much on the world system. Your accomplishments, I'm not taking that away from you. But make your accomplishments last by having God in your life. Otherwise, it just disappears when you die. Troubled times are ahead. We don't know the future. Many of you will lose your jobs. Many of you will lose your house. You lose your cars. Right? You know, many of you, the banks will repossess whatever you owe, whether it's your house, whether it's your cars, because you cannot pay. So where is that going to leave you? Right? Can you afford just believing whatever you want to believe or putting into your mind that which, which does not exist? Right? But there is already the word of God that does exist. And God is telling us, my kingdom is not part of this world. It is come. So eventually, as he says in the book of Revelation, that the kingdom of this world will become the kingdoms of Jesus Christ. He will establish his kingdom in here. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes again, he will come as a judge. Every one of us will be judged. And every one of us you know, whatever you have uh, done in your life will be exposed. Every lie will be exposed. So that's why it is necessary before the Lord comes back that we confess our sins, that we change our lifestyle. It is not just a matter of getting rich. It is not just a matter of getting what you want. It's living a lifestyle of the kingdom of God. Are you prepared to do this? Because if you are, God is going to give you a chance. For those watching this message, and you have not known God before, or you have known God 50-50, or even 25%, this is your chance to change your heart. You don't have to tell anyone. Just confess to God and accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your life and things will change. 
and begin to read the Word of God. I know a lot of you there, husbands and wives, one of you is saved and one of you is not. And for the one that's not, it's because something is holding you up. You're hanging on to the deceit of, the, of this world. Your mind has been cap, taken captive by the enemy. You have listened to the whispers of the enemy. So that's why it's, it's hard for you to believe in God. But why not take a leap of faith? Why not ask God and show you? If you have made a mistake, just confess it. Lord, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I made an assumption that is not true. And then you have a chance to enter into the kingdom of God. You have a chance to believe on the truth. That's why Pilate, when he was talking to Jesus before condemning him to the crucifixion, he said, I find no guilt in this man. Right? But it was the Jews who shouted, crucify him, crucify him. So Pilate's hand was held captive by the enemy and he let go and he crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. Likewise, you need to be released, delivered from the captive hands of the enemy. Once you do that, you'll be able to understand the whys. You got so many whys today. Why this? Why that? Why is God letting all this happen? Well, it's not really God. It's what man has chosen, man against man. And man who does evil has been taken captive by the enemy. His mind is totally under the enemy's control. So what do you have to do? You need to pray for these people. All those people who are doing evil, we need to pray for them. This is what Jesus said in the Bible. We don't condemn them. But we pray so that they have a chance to survive. I was taken into heaven not long ago because I was bringing to the Lord all these people who are making all these laws. And the Lord showed me in the courts of heaven, there are many courts, hundreds of courts, and people are lining up depending on their status to be taken into court and to be judged. When you are judged up in the courts of heaven, there's no more chance for you, right? There's no more chance for salvation. And that's why the Lord was saying to me, pray for this, pray for that. If nobody prays for them, there is no chance for them to be saved. There is no chance for them to repent. They will follow that course that is evil taken captive by the mind of Satan, by, the, by Satan. So you are the only hope. So when I was there, I saw all these great men, politicians, presidents, prime ministers, entering into the courts, and they were being judged in heaven. Soon, once they get judged in heaven, their lives here will be no more, let me say, they're going to be exposed. All the lies that they have said will be exposed. You see, it cannot go on like this forever and ever. God is a righteous judge. He is above all judges. Right? And when God judges, it is a righteous judge. So we cannot blame God for all the woes that's happening on this earth. When things happen, many people curse God. And say, why doesn't God do this? Why, why doesn't God do that? Well, man has chosen the evil way. So when we change our lifestyles, when all of us are making an effort to do what is good according to heaven, right, then things will change. Eventually things will change. So my dear brothers and sisters, we are entering into a season where the great tribulation is going to come. I don't know where it's going to start, but it looks like we are at the, be 
The beginning of sorrows have already started. Our lockdowns are an example that restrictions are coming. You can no longer have the freedom to decide whatever you want to decide and to do whatever you want to do. Yeah? So you have to make a choice. Let this message be a trigger for you choosing the way of God. Let go of all your comforts because it's not going to last. It's temporal. I know some of you love your golf, love your parties, love your entertainment, right? But all of that is going to finish one day. And when you die, it's finished. So in other words, why keep on seeking those things? Learn about the things of God and you will find the real precious jewels that you have been searching for all your life. It's not just about the comforts that you have obtained, the wealth that you have obtained. All of that without God is nothing. But with God in your life, you can serve God with what you have. Serve God with what you have. Don't lose it. So I'm going to close in the Word of God. I'm going to close in the prayer. And when I begin to pray, I want you to close your eyes. And just open up your hearts. Because if you're listening to this message, it is because God is calling you. God is waking you up. And He wants you. Don't think that nobody wants you. God wants you. More than that, He loves you. In spite of everything that you have done, He still loves you. He wants to give you a chance. So take this opportunity to accept the Lord in your life. Take this opportunity to start changing what you are believing. Don't just believe whatever you want to believe. Believe in the Word of God. It is the truth. And it is salvation unto you. So let us close with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for your Word. We thank you, Lord, that you are touching our lives right now. And that you are doing something for all of us. Father, I bring unto you all those who have not accepted you. I pray, Lord, that you will see their hearts and touch their hearts. That you will forgive them for all the things of the past. That you will fill them with your Holy Spirit. That you will give them a chance, Lord, to grab hold of the kingdom that is coming. To grab hold of the things that you have prepared for them before the foundations of the earth. Father, we thank you because your grace avails much. I thank you, Lord God, for your tender mercies, Lord, for bringing us into your kingdom, for forgiving our sins, Lord. And Father, I pray, help all those who are listening to this message and bless them, Lord Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, once again, Thank you for hearing this message. We look forward to seeing you again in the next message. May God bless you all. Have a wonderful time in the things of God. May He protect you from all the powers of darkness that your mind will be cleared to think righteously and correctly in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Thank you for watching.